than the ones in the first lessons that I did and they will get progressively harder. So um, if you found the first group really easy, then you might want to focus a little more on these ones. Okay, so let's go from a window of one building, the angle of elevation of the top and angle of depression of the bottom are respectively 38 degrees and 51 degrees. Find the height of the second building if they are 42 meters apart. Okay, so we have a couple of angles to write on, but we know right away that this is 42 meters from here to here. And it says from a window of one building. So you can choose whatever window you want, but I'll pick this one here. And we're going to measure to the top of the other building. So remember that when you're doing angles of elevation and depression, you need a sight line. So the sight line is going to be this line right here. Okay, so it's straight, it's horizontal to the ground. So this is your sight line here. So I have two angles to deal with. I have the angle of elevation and an angle of depression. So the angle of depression, oops, remember is from a sight line down. That's depression down. Okay, so we have one going down and one going up. So the up one, it says respectively. So respectively means whatever one I said first goes with the first number. So the elevation of the top Angle of elevation is 38 degrees, so I'm going to put that here. And the angle of depression is 51 degrees, so that's here. Okay, don't worry about the scale. I mean, this one angle actually looks bigger than this one, but it doesn't matter. We're still doing the same math. Okay, so when I know this angle and I have this length so this is also 42 meters here right the same distance between the two buildings up here or down here and so I want a little plan here how am I going to find the height well I can see that the height can be made up of these two lines here right this one and this purple one if I add those together that's going to give me the entire height of the building so I can figure out what this side length is here Let's call, um, let's call this one X and we'll call this one H. No, we don't like using H because that means hypotenuse. Let's call it um, X2 and X1. And we're going to add those up. Okay, so let's say let X represent, let X represent, X1 represent the top part of the building. And we're going to say, let x2 represent the bottom part of the building. Okay, so what trig ratio am I going to use? So I have this angle, put your finger on the angle. It's opposite and adjacent. We're not using the hypotenuse at all. So this is going to be the opposite side and this is going to be the adjacent side for this angle 38 degrees. So O and A, that means I'm going to use tan. So I'm going to say the tan of 38 degrees is going to be equal to X1 opposite over adjacent over 42. So if I want to solve for X1, I have 42 times the tan of 38. 42 tan 38 degrees and you get out your trusty calculator and clear it and we're going to do 42 times the tan of 38 and I get 32.8 approximately so approximately 32.8 and then I just do the same thing with the the purple part here this triangle here so this is the opposite for this one and this is also the adjacent so we're still using tan but I have different angle so tan of 51 degrees is going to be x2 over 42 so x2 equals 42 times the tan 
of 51 degrees. So I do that one, 42 times the tan of 51, and I get 51.9, I'm rounding to one decimal, 51.9. Okay, now I just need a concluding statement, therefore the building is approximately, and I'm going to say 32.8 plus 51.9, equals my need is 17 to the 484.7 meters. Okay, so that's how you do it. Did I, did I add them up right? Yes, I did. Okay. The next question, number nine, maybe you want to stop and try it on your own. It's um, It looks a little more complicated than it is. It says, a surveyor wishes to find the height of an inaccessible cliff BC. So here's my cliff here. Okay, this is the cliff. To do this, he sets up his transit. Transit is just something used to measure angles. And I don't know if it measures distances as well, but it, it's a surveying tour, tool. Okay, so he sets up his transit at 8A here. And he measures angle C, A, B. And he says it is 62 degrees. He lays out a baseline AD, so here, this was given in the question, by the way, in case you're wondering how would I ever figure this out, you probably could. Um, AD perpendicular to AB, so perpendicular to AB, then measures angle ADB, and that's 51 degrees. The distance between A and D is 84.5 meters find the height of the cliff. So when you first look at this question, you have to figure out where am I trying to get to? What is my, my goal here? Find the height of the cliff. So I, I want to know this length here. But if you look at this length here, you only have an angle and that's not enough information for you to solve for this height. Remember, you would need one other side length and the unknown. So let's call the height of the cliff x. And so let x represent height of cliff. And then we're going to do, um, we want to know this side, right? That's the only other common side that will help us find this cliff height. So if I knew this side, then I could figure that out easily. So I look to this angle, and remember this is a right angle triangle too. So I have a side length and I have an angle. So I want to find this side length, right? So let's call that, um, let's call it H. I know I said I don't want to use H, but it ends up being the hypotenuse for that. So for this triangle, the hypotenuse is over here. If I label these sides now, I'm here. This would be the hypotenuse. So that makes this the adjacent side and this the opposite side. So I have O and A, so that means tan. So the tan of 51 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. So that's gonna be my H. Let's call it HT, just so it's height of this triangle, not this cliff. Oh, it gets so confusing trying to find the appropriate letters, right? So height over 84.5. So HT is going to be equal to 84.5 times the tan of 51 degrees. So we bring in the calculator, 84.5 times the tan of 51 degrees and I get approximately 104.3 on the screen. You don't yell loud enough when I go off. 104.3. Okay, so now I know this length here, 104.3. I'll put a little squirrely thing around it because that's what we solve for. So now you can see I can find the height of the cliff very easily because I have an angle I have the hypotenuse, and I'm trying to find the opposite side. So this is now going to be O 
for this triangle. Remember, we're dealing with a different triangle now. So this is the opposite side. This would be the adjacent. That would be the hypotenuse for this triangle. Okay, so I'm going to say the, I'm using O and H, so I want to use sine. So the sine of 62 degrees is going to be opposite over the hypotenuse, which we already calculated, 104, whoops, forgot the zero, 104.3. So X is going to be 104.3 times the sine of 62 degrees. And that's going to give us our answer. So 104.3 times the sine of 62, and I get 92.1 approximately. Okay, so now you can say, therefore, the cliff is approximately, let's see, we got this thing here. Therefore, the cliff is approximately 92.1 meters high. Okay, so that's, um, that's another little surveyor question. You get lots of those. You're going to be surveyors. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Get it centered here. Okay. Okay, so it says from a point 120 meters from the foot of a building, the angles of elevation of the top and bottom of a flagpole on top of the building are 49 and 46 degrees respectively. Find the height of the building and the flagpole. So here's my building here. I did this first so I wouldn't waste too much time drawing pictures for you. And I have an angle of elevation. Let me drop my ruler. I have another one here. Okay, so we're going to go 120 meters from the base, so that's from here, say to here. And now I'm measuring this way, so an angle of elevation. So I've got one angle that's going up to here, and I have another one to the top of the flagpole. So you've got two, two triangles to work with. Okay, so it says the Angle, angles of elevation of the top and bottom of a flagpole are 49 degrees, so 49 degrees to the top, so that's this orange one, that's 49 degrees, and obviously the one that's a little bit smaller, this one here, is 46 degrees. Okay, so find the height of the building and the flagpole. Okay, so we have this purple triangle. Let's say this one like this. And I have this side, and I can find the height of the building right away. So let's, um, let's call this X. Let X represent the height of the building. Height of building. Okay, so what trig ratio am I going to use? I have this angle. I'm looking for this. That's the opposite side, and this is the adjacent. So I'm going to say tan of 46 degrees equals x over 120. So x is going to be 120 times the tan of 46. 120 tan 46 degrees. So let's bring this in, 120 times the tan of 46, and I get 124.3, so approximately 124.3. Make sure that you answer to the correct number of decimals that your teacher asked for. Okay, so now we have this problem because I can't use just this angle to find this, right? This isn't a right angled triangle, this one. So I'm going to have to use this big triangle from here all the way to here. Okay, because this isn't a right angled triangle, but this one would be. So let's call this X2 now, which is going to go from here all the way to here. OK, 
Okay, so let x2 represent the height of the building plus the flagpole. So we're going to find the height to the very top of the flagpole now. And then we're just going to subtract them, right? I subtract, I'll have the flagpole, the building is this tall. So let's do the second one now. We have tan of 49 degrees equals x2 over 120. So x equals 120 tan 49 degrees. So 120 times tan 49 and I get 138.0. So approximately equal to 138. Okay, so we've got the two heights. So we can give the height of the building because that's this one for sure. Therefore, the building is 124.3 meters tall. And the flagpole, we're going to subtract 138, 138 minus 124.3, and that's going to give us 13, right? But 13.7 meters. That's a big flagpole. I guess it's kind of normal though, isn't it? Who knows? Okay, it's a math question. Sometimes they don't make sense. No, they always make sense. I shouldn't say that. Okay, from a boat on the water, the angle of elevation of the top of the cliff is 31 degrees. Okay, so let's put a boat on the water. It's going to be an orange boat. We need a yellow submarine. Okay, here's my boat. Mine are always fancy little sailboats. So the angle of elevation of the top of the cliff so we'll measure it from the water level to the top of the cliff is 31 degrees. From a point 300 meters closer to the cliff, the angle of elevation is 33 degrees. Okay, so the boat moved over. Boat's now here. And don't worry about the distances. We just It's just a sketch, right? So if I move that one over here, and I do another angle elevation, this is going to be um, 33 degrees. Okay, that makes sense, right? The farther out you are, the flatter that angle will be. So 38 degrees, and we're trying to find the height of the cliff. Okay, so we have a little problem because the only thing we have in the, in the calculation here is that you're 300 meters closer so what we're going to say is we're going to say let x represent let x represent the initial distance from the cliff now can you think of another way from the cliff it's hard to write and talk at the same time so this is going to be x it's going to be from here to here because I don't know how far away it was from the cliff the only thing I know is that this distance here let's get another color so this distance from here to here was 300 meters less so that means that when I'm here this distance from here to here is going to be x minus 300 Do you see that so if this was all x and we move 300 closer, this is x minus 300. And once you've got that, you're all set, right? The rest of it's going to be easy. Okay, so let's call um, the height of the cliff, uh, let's call it y. Okay, so let y represent the height of the cliff. So we'll put Y in our diagram. Okay, so now you need to set up some, some math here. We've got to use some of our fancy skills. So when I'm here, I can figure out um, Y. 
right? We can use tan. This is opposite over adjacent. So the tan of 31 degrees, tan of this angle, is y over x, right? y over x. Okay, so don't get too upset yet. I know you're going to say, oh, we've got two unknowns. So what would y be equal to? Because that's what we want to solve for, right? y is equal to x times the tan of 31 degrees. Okay, now we have another measurement to do here. So we have tan of 33 degrees now. Tan 33 degrees is going to be opposite y over the adjacent, which is now x minus 300. So that means y is going to be x minus 300 times the tan of 33 degrees. Okay, so we can we know what tan of 31 degrees is. Well, not in our heads, but we can find that on the calculator. So I just want to know what is the tan of 31 degrees, and I get 0. 0.6009. So this is going to be 0.6009x. So I just solve for this part. Now on this side, I want to know what is the tan of 33 degrees. So I'm going to put that in my calculator. And I get 0.6494. So this is going to be 0 0.6494. That's tan times the x, and then I have, so I did this times this, and I have to minus 300 times that 0.6494. I'll, I'll write it out like this first, you know where it came from. 0 0.6494. I'm just going to do that on the side here for a second. Okay, so I get 194.8. So this is 0.6494x minus 194.8. Okay, so now would you know what to do with that? So we've got y is equal to this and y is equal to that. So that means this has to be equal to this. And that from that we're going to be able to solve for x. Okay, so if y is this and y is this and this is that. It's like me saying... If y is equal to 2 plus 2 and y equals 3 plus 1, then 2 plus 2 has to be equal to 3 plus 1, right? That's the, the logic behind what I'm using here. So now I'm going to say 0.6009x is equal to 0.6494x minus 194.8. So I've set them equal to each other, and I'm going to solve. So I'm going to bring 194.8 to this side, and I'm going to subtract that other x over here, minus 0.6009x, and that's going to give me um, 0 0.0485. Zero, zero, four, eight, 14 minus 905, 485. And that's x. So now I have to divide 194.8. So x is equal to, and you just do that on your calculator quickly. I've already got that number in here. So I'll divide that by 0 0.0485. And I get 4,000. And 16.9, well, I rounded up, so it would have been 0.5 if I would left this in. So that's 4016.5 approximately. Okay, so that's the x, but you want to find the height of the cliff. This question isn't over yet. So now find y, so y is equal to x times this, so 4016.5 times 
um, 10 of 31. And that, and we're running out of paper, so we better have an answer now. We've got 2, 4, 1, 3.4 meters. Whoa, that's one tall cliff. I don't have room for a concluding statement, but I'm sure you can write a concluding statement for that. Two more questions to go. Okay, number 12, it says from the top of a cliff 185 meters high, the angles of depression of two channel boys in the same line of sight on the water are 13 degrees and 15 degrees. So boys are those things that float in the water if you don't know. And usually they're red and green, green for the port side or the left side of the ship and red for the starboard side. So I've got an angle down to this one and I have another angle down to this one. Now, if you just do this, you're going to say, oh, now what am I supposed to do? Because what did what should you always draw on first? Or it doesn't have to be first, but what has to be drawn on is your sight line, right? So we're going to put a sight line on here. Okay, so that's my sight line. In other words, looking straight across, horizontal to the ground. So I have two angles. So it said um, 13 degrees and 15 degrees. So this one is 13 degrees. And this one from here to here is going to be 15 degrees. And the cliff is 185 meters high. This time they gave that to us. So 185 meters. Okay, so let's do our um, calculations now. So we have um, 185. Oh, remember that you have Z pattern going on here, right? So if this angle is 13, then this angle is 13 degrees. That's the Z pattern, two horizontal lines with a transverse, this and this, this one, and this is 15 degrees here. Okay, so now you can figure out this length. Now remember you have to look at the triangle, so the red triangle is going to go all the way this way, right? That's one triangle. The other triangle is going to be this one here. Okay, so let's do the red triangle. Might run out of ink here. Okay, so I have this side and I'm trying to find this side. So again, it's tan. Tan gets used a lot in word problems. So the tan of 13 degrees is going to be 185 over Oh, we didn't give a, a let statement here. So um, let's call this red one x1. And the green length is going to be x2 from here to here. Okay. Hope you're seeing those two triangles. So 185 over x1. And we'll write the other one out right away too. So we've got the tan of 15 degrees is going to be 185 over x2. So x1 is going to be 185 times 1 divided by the tan of 13. Okay, watch up, down, up. Multiply on the diagonal, divide by the last one. So 185, I'll put the 1 in, you won't need to do that. Tan of 13. Okay, so let's do that quickly. 185 divided by tan of 13, and I get... 801.3 801.3 and the other one is going to be the same calculation so it goes up down up that's the end thing if you missed that lesson you can go back and have a look um, there we go tan of 15 degrees and that's going to come out to 690.4 Okay, so I have this long red length and the green length and the distance between these two. If I told you this was five and this is three, you'd say, oh, that's two. So all we're doing is subtracting them, right? So therefore, the distance between the boys is 801.3 minus 690.4 
and that comes out to about 110.9 meters. Okay, now the last one, this is a difficult question and um, I'm doing it because it incorporates all sorts of different things that you would have learned by now in grade 10 math. So it's asking you to determine the acute angle at which 2x minus 1 and y equals 0.5x plus 2 intersect. So do you remember how to find the intersection point of two lines? So that's the first thing we have to think about. Let's draw them first so that you've got an idea of where you're going to be. So 2x minus 1, so that's a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of minus 1. So I have minus 1 and a slope of 2 means up 2 over 1. Now my scale is larger on this axis. I did that on purpose and you'll see why when we try to draw it. Okay, so I needed a little more space. So this is going to be y equals 2x minus 1. And the other line is, oh, I think maybe I might have written down 2x minus 1, no, and 0.5x plus 2. Okay, so 0.5x plus 2, the y-intercept is 2, and the slope is 1 over 2, right? A half is 1 over 2, so I go up 1, and I go over 2. Up 1 over 2. So it's like this, and I think... My drawing, my my scale is going to, it's okay, be like this. Okay, so I need to know this point of intersection. <coughs> and it actually is 2, 3. If you did a really good, accurate sketch or drawing, you would have found that. But if you didn't know that, how do you find the intersection of two lines? So this is y equals 0.5x plus 2. You did this at the start of analytic geometry, which I haven't done a lesson on yet, but I'll get to it. So for the point of intersection, you set the lines equal to each other. So I do 2x minus 1 equals 0.5x plus 2. So I bring this over to this side, and I would have... 1.5x is equal to 2 plus 1, 3, and I divide by 1.5, and I get x is equal to 2. And now to find y, I can plug 2 into either of these equations. I would pick this one because there's no decimal in it. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 3. Therefore, the point of intersection, the POI, I write, is 2, 3. So this is 2, 3. Now what I'm trying to find is the acute angle. So I want to know what this angle is here. Now you'd say, well, they're opposite angles. Um, maybe I could use, well, no, that's not. You need a right angle, right? Because we need to use some, some good trig on this. So if I were to um, pick a point on this line, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to extend this, and I pick the point when x is 6, what is y for this line? So if I'm on this line, you can pick any point you want. I just chose 6 because it works out nicely mathematically, right? 6 times a half is 3 plus 2 is 5, right? So I can do 6. And this should be 5. And it's close. Okay, so this is the point 6, 5. Now, in order for me to figure out, I need a length, right? I need two lengths, actually. I would like to know, and this is what you should be thinking, how am I going to find this angle? So to find the angle, you need two side lengths. So if I know this side length here, and I know the side length that's going to be going up this way perpendicular to this, right? If I can find this side length and this side length, I can tell you that angle. And that's what we're going to do. So there's a little bit of calculations involved. The first thing you need to do 
is find the equation of this line. What's the equation? So you know that if, in order to be perpendicular to this line, it has to have the negative reciprocal of this slope. So what's the negative reciprocal of 0.5? Negative reciprocal of, let's call it 1 half, is minus 2. So the slope of this line has to be negative 2. So slope equals minus 2, and I have a point, I have this point here, which I didn't write very nicely, 6, 5. Right? We found that by finding, picking a point and finding the y-coordinate by plugging it in here. So I have a point on the line, 6, 5, and I have a slope. So now I'm going to use y equals mx plus b to solve for the b value and get the equation of this line. Why am I doing that? Because I need to know where does that line intersect with this line. And if I know these two points, then I can find the length of this line. I can find the length of this line here right now because I know this is 6, 5, and this is 2, 3. So I can use length of a line segment calculation in order to find the length of that green line. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. The point is 6, 5. So I say 5 equals minus 2 times 6 plus b. That's minus 12 bring it over, add it to 5, so b equals 17. So y equals minus 2x plus 17 is the equation of this line that's perpendicular. Okay, not the line segment, but the equation of a line. So this, I'll label it here, y equals minus 2x plus 17. Okay, so now I need to know this intersection point. So I want to know where does y equals minus 2x plus 17 intersect, intersect, I spelled it wrong, with this line, which is 2x, y equals 2x minus 1. And how do you find a point of intersection again? You set them equal to each other. So that's what I'm going to do. So minus 2x plus 17 has to be equal to 2x minus 1. That's going to give me the x-coordinate of the point of intersection. So I'm going to bring this over here and this over here. So I'm going to add 2. That's going to give me 4x. And I add 1 to 17. That's going to give me 18. And so 4x equals 18. What's x equal to? x equals 18 over 4. That's 9 over 2. And that would be 4.5. So when x equals 4.5, what's y equal to? Because I want to know what this point is way up here. Right? I need to know this point. So y equals 2 times 4.5 minus 1. So that's 9 minus 1 is 8. Therefore, 4.5. Whoops, I didn't mean to put a... I don't think... Uh, where's my eraser? 4.5 and 8. Okay, so we're getting there. 4.58 is the point of intersection. Okay, all's fine. We've got this point. Let me just draw a little sketch here down at the bottom so we don't have to keep looking up. This point here is 4.5 and 8. This point here was 6 and 5. And this point here is 2 and 3. So now you have to find the lengths. We want to find this angle. I want to find this length and this length. I have to find two of them. It doesn't matter which two I choose, but we're going to find the length of a line segment. Okay, do you remember how to do that? So I'm going to have to put it over here. So L1, remember it's the square root, and you have, I made my class make little, um, little 
faces. See, because it looks like it looks like a little face here. See if I put a smile there. See, it's minus, minus, plus. There's a little nose, and these are eyebrows. So now you're finding the length of the line segment. So I'm going to do um, 4.5. I'm going to write it right over here. 4.58 and 6.5. So I'm going to do um, x2 minus x1. So I'm going to do 6 minus 4.5. 6 minus 4.5 and 5 minus 8. So you have to square them. We're going to leave it all under the radical sign. So 6 minus 4.5, that's um, oh, 1.5 squared. Okay, so I did it here somewhere. I end up with this, okay? So I'm not going to waste time doing that calculation. Leave it like this. That's the length of the first line. And the second line segment, I'm going to do 6. Let's go over here. Can you see that? We're going to use 6, 5, and 2, 3. So the same calculation, length of a line segment. 6 minus 2 squared plus 5 minus 3 squared. And that's going to give me the square root of... 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16, and this is 4, and that gives me square root 20. Okay, so this is a tough question, right? It's not really tough, it's just a lot of different things that you've learned. So now that I know these two line segments, the lengths here, I have this one and this one. So 11.25 is this, let me get it back in the, in the view here. So this is, let me get a color, make it bright. So this is the square root of 11.25, and this is the square root of 20. Should have put it in green. So now I can find this angle, let's call it theta. And I'm using this side and this side, so that's opposite over adjacent. So in the end here, all I have to do now is the tan of theta equals the square root of 11.25. Leave all the decimals because it gives you more accuracy, right? You're going to you're, use your calculator anyway. So I'm going to do tan negative 1 of this again, 11.25 over square root 20 equals theta. And now all you have to do is plug that on into your dear little calculator. Second, tan. So I put that in. So I'm going to do second square root of 11.25 divided by second square root 20 equals 36.25. 8, 6, or 36.9 degrees. So theta approximately equal to 36.9 degrees. And there you go. There's some really tough questions. If you can do this one, my goodness, that means that you've understood a lot of your grade 10 curriculum, how to find the intersections, how to find the length of a line segment, and how to use trig. So it's a, an excellent uh, summative type question. Hope these help you. If you uh, haven't subscribed, please do, and make sure you're in grade 10. There's grade 11 and 12 math there for you as well. Bye for now.